a messenger rides to a distant troop with a secret message. On the way, he is intercepted. But what does the encrypted text say? From the 16th to the 19th century, the Viginaire encryption was considered a secure method. It was generally used with short key phrases. In 1863, the Prussian infantry major Friedrich Wilhelm Kassiski published a method for determining the probable key length, known as the Kassiski test. This involves searching the encrypted text for text sections that are at least three characters long and occur several times in the text. In our ciphertext, we find K Amy twice, LRN also twice and GNK even three times. Our ciphertext contains 251 letters, some spaces and a few punctuation marks. We number the letters from 1 to 251. We find the first K Amy at position 18 and the second at position 102. 102 minus 18 is 84. The first LRN is at position 107 and the second at position 177. 177 minus 107 is 70. The three occurrences of GNK are at positions 139, 153 and 237. 153 minus 139 is 14. 237 minus 153 is 84. Now we divide the distances 84, 70 and 14 into the prime factors. 84 equals 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. 70 equals 2 times 5 times 7. 14 equals 2 times 7. What they all have in common is 2 times 7, which gives 14. It is therefore very likely that the original text was encrypted with a key phrase of length 14. Now we group the ciphertext into 14 columns. If the ciphertext was really encrypted with a 14-character key, then all the characters in each column were encrypted with the same key letter. Now we can attack the ciphertext with a frequency analysis of the letters. To do this, we count how often each cipher letter occurs in each column. In the first column, K and O occur most frequently, namely four times each. Since E is the most common letter in English, it is not certain, but quite likely, that either the cipher letter K or O in the first column could correspond to an E in plain text. If the secret letter K corresponds to the plain text letter E, then the key letter would be AG in this case. If instead the O corresponds to the E, then K would be the key letter in the first column. In the second column, S is the most common. If this corresponds to E, the second key letter would be O. We now do this for all 14 columns and arrive at the provisional key G or K, O, Q, G or S, N, K, N, T, H, N, J or K, S, J and V. In the next step, we can use this to try to decrypt the ciphertext. Neither the key phrase nor the plain text is really readable. In the next step, we look at the text snippets that we have found more than once. GNK occurs three times. We assume that the original text was in English. One of the most common English words is, the. If GNK corresponds to, the, then the key would be NGG, at least in the first column. This agrees with our previous assumption, namely with the key letter G, but not in the last two columns. We now tentatively assume that GNK really corresponds to, the. So we now change the last two key letters in N and G, and get the new provisional key, Gog Gesenken Thin Yexing, and a new provisional plain text, which is still largely unreadable. To get further, we can now attack the ciphertext and the key phrase by trying out a word that probably occurs in the original text in all possible places. So we do a brute force plain text attack. Since this is a military text, probably an order from the general to a distant unit, there is a good chance that the word general appears somewhere in the original text. We start at the beginning and have the ciphertext letters X S S G R O W in the first position. Below this we write the presumed plain text word general. If X corresponds to G, then the key letter in this position should be an R. If S corresponds to an E, then the key letter would be O. SN results in F. GE results in C. RR results in A. OA results in O. And WL results in L. The key sequence would therefore be Rothkale. This does not seem to fit. 
In the second position, the ciphertext SSGROWH as general would result in the key MOTNXWW that doesn't fit either. We now diligently try all the text passages one after the other. We can't find anything useful in positions 1 to 49. But finally in position 50 we find what we are looking for. If ZLROZNR stands for general, then the key letter T results for ZG. LE results in H. RN results in E. ZLR as gen therefore gives the key word the. And further, OE results in K. ZR is I. NA is N. And RL is G. Hey, if the plain text says general, the key here would be the king, which is certainly no coincidence. So we adjust our analysis table. Our provisional key is now, Gok Gesenken the king. Parts of the plain text can now be read in fragments. For example, in the ninth line report or the last word made. This confirms that our last assumption was correct. Directly below general is, N formatio. This almost certainly means information. To make this fit, we replace the plain text letters in columns 3 and 7 with N and I respectively, thus obtaining the key letters D in column 3 and E in column 7. Our key is now, God Gesenki the king. Columns 4, 5 and 6 are not yet correct. In the fourth column, the letters below G do not match at all. The letters under S are more likely to fit. The key would then be, God Sinker the king although columns 5 and 6 are probably wrong. What could fit here? The best fit is, God save the king. It was an English messenger who was intercepted. So this key phrase fits perfectly. And really, the text is now fully legible. Reports of all guards are to be made every morning to the adjutant general for the information of the brigadier. Whenever Indians are sent out on party a report is to be made to the brigadier at their return by the superintendent of the Indian affairs on what they have done and what discoveries they may have made. So we have cracked the ciphertext. However, this only became systematically possible in 1863, thanks to the Kasiski test. Since then, Visionaire encryption has been considered insecure. Above all, in the 20th century, Encryption and decryption was automated by encryption machines, which was much more efficient and faster than manual visionary encryption. But what contributed to the fact that the ciphertext could be cracked in our example? First, the key was much shorter than the plain text. The key phrase was therefore repeated several times, namely 18 times. This allowed the Kasiski test to be applied. Second, the key consisted of a readable and guessable phrase. Third, a simple alphabetic shift was used for the encryption. Is it possible to use Visionaire encryption more securely? Well, if you were to observe the following rules, you could achieve quite strong encryption even with this old encryption method. First, the key must be the same length as the plain text. Second, the key must consist of a random sequence of arbitrary characters that cannot be guessed i.e. neither a readable text nor a non-randomly calculated sequence of pseudo-random characters. This would require the key to be exchanged between sender and recipient in advance, which is organizationally complex. Third, each key may only be used once. I hope the video was informative and I would appreciate positive comments, a thumbs up and a subscription. Bye and see you next time.